okay. So this should be rolling here. Okay, now it's recording. Yay, Yay, we're on. Okay, so now we're doing this on Zoom. Good morning, all you cool cats and kittens. This is something I've been dying oh to say ever since I binged Tiger King. <laughs> I still haven't watched that yet because I already have too many shows on the go. And I'm like, I no, like even in a pandemic, I need to limit my Netflix intake. <laughs> 100 percent but um yeah so here we are and now we finally got this working so we're doing pinterest thank design you for and your patience <laughs> thank you everyone for your patience we will be reposting this in the group um very shortly and um yeah like, i can't believe it's like my morning started off so great and then it all went to shit at like nine o'clock so right. i'm sorry everyone <laughs> uh I say I feel like every day is just like a very awful Monday these days. <laughs> we can't win. We just can't no, win. Happy, can't happy win. pandemic. <laughs> yeah, right. There we go. Oh my god. Thank goodness for coffee. Like live every day as an adventure. It is an adventure. Every day is indeed an adventure, just not oh. the one that we want. No. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So we are on for, um, we are going to do, here we are, we're doing Pinterest uh, design and strategy here this morning. And um, I guess, I, I don't know, let's, <laughs> let's, let's start now. <laughs> okay, so um, like we said, like I'm mainly focusing on design because that's my background. Like I'm formally trained as a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. um, and so I thought I would kind of go into more like basic principles that are a little more applicable uh, across the board. I am a travel blogger. So my examples and that are going to be travel based, but I tried to keep it as general as possible. Um, so yeah, I know one of the biggest questions that is asked is where do I create my pins? And I am a Photoshop girl all the way. Photoshop is my baby. It's what I live and breathe. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can only use Photoshop for pins. Obviously Canva is a perfect, um, uh, you know, a perfect tool that you can use. Um, my video just like went just to big to me and I'm like, Ooh, this is scary. Um, <laughs> that's cause I, I put you on spotlight. Spotlight! Ooh, spotlight's <laughs> on me. I don't know how I feel about this. No, I'm just kidding. I'm fine. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I'm not going to dive deep into the technical side of things of how I use Photoshop to make my pins because that's just a whole other ball game on its own. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that people have about Photoshop itself. Um, Yes, Erin, Canva is amazing. Um, and it's really great for making quick and easy pins. And honestly, the biggest thing with Pinterest is photography. Um, you know, it's, if you think about it, and I had trouble wrapping my head around this for the longest time, but we need, if you aren't thinking of uh, Pinterest as a search engine and then you're in trouble. It's not a social network, even though it likes to get lumped into, you know, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, it's a hundred percent different. Um, you need to be thinking like a user and how you see things when you use Pinterest. So like what catches your eye? It's those pretty beautiful photos, you know, high contrast colors, things that pop out. So try to keep that in mind as you're designing your pins. Um, and honestly, when you're thinking about you know, design overall, that's what I do first is I just scroll through my feed and there's a couple of examples, like, uh, words are hard. Um, <laughs> accounts that always pop out to be practical wanderlust. Their pins are absolutely gorgeous. Leah knocks it out of the park every single time. Um, and so go through and think of a couple of accounts that you really like their pin designs, um, and try to emulate them. You know, like, don't go and copy, obviously, picture for picture or anything like that, but take the principles or, like, the, the elements that you really enjoy and try to incorporate them into your pins. Um, so that's how I kind of started, because I am a little bit of a stick in the mud sometimes. I like to dig my heels in, and for the longest time, I refused to change my pin design that didn't match my brand entirely. So I used all the same fonts, you know, and... Honestly, when I look at them now, I'm like, why didn't I do this sooner? Why didn't I change them sooner? Because they're really ugly, really ugly. And, <laughs> and you know, the photos of that are great. But when you take a look here, let's see if I can share. Uh, ah. uh, it's been a while since I've actually shared my screen on this. You okay? Do I need to? Uh... 
I'm just trying to figure out how I can share my screen. Okay. Is that you? That's you. Is that you? It just popped up. What is that? <laughs> oh, are we all learning right now? No, I was like, all of a sudden on my side, I have like desktop one, whiteboard, iPhone, iPad, Chrome unknown, oh. messages unknown, like all popped up. Like, what do you want to share? I'm like, oh, no, no, not me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> if that was me, I apologize. I haven't hit any buttons, but that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> um, okay. So, oh, start share. Haha, -ha, okay. Okay, I think I can do this now. Huzzah! Okay, is this hey. working? Can people see? Okay, ignore my plethora of tabs. There we go. Oh, you're you look just like how I'm operating. <laughs> I have way too many tabs. Uh, okay, so we're gonna scroll. Oh, look at pretty, 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 uh, pretty, pretty. Those are pretty pins. Pretty, pretty pins. Look at all the pretty pins. We're gonna go back. We're gonna go dig deep into the belly of the beast where I began. And it is okay to laugh. It is acceptable. Okay, come on, Chrome. Load faster. <laughs> you got so many. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So not the worst in the world. But as you can see, while the fonts in that match my blog entirely, if you think even just looking at them in the feed here, they don't really stand out. Right? They all kind of meld together. And how old would you say that these pins are, Lindsay? Uh, probably two years old plus. Okay. Um, and when you're revamping your Pinterest, you know, it, it doesn't have to be uh, kind of a, an undertaking that you're like, uh, you know, you're scrambling, you're overwhelmed, that kind of thing. Um, honestly, start with just making one template that you really love. And then as you you know, you want to upgrade or like add and get more traction to specific posts, then go in and add more. Um, I know some bloggers that don't even do templates. Uh, they just go full hog and design all the time, just go with what they feel like. And that works too. I personally use templates because it helps streamline things. Um, just because then I could crank out three pins quick, bam, bam, bam. And then I'm all set for a while. Um, so as you can see here, now I'm kind of moving into, you can see my first template here with the waterfalls in Hamilton into the Canada Cozumel. And then, and then I've got one here more for um, portrait style photos. So that's another thing too to take into account is um, obviously when with bloggers, a lot of time we're when we take photos, we are working in landscape photos. Um, so for the longest time, again, I didn't use this kind of split screen style. And it was a pain in the butt to try and make pins that are portrait when all your photos are landscape, because <laughs> it just cuts off half the photo. Um, so that's one big perk to having kind of the split screen style. And also because you can showcase more of what your article is about. You know, so as you can see, um, you know, like the street art and Cosmo one, like I've got two examples of, you know, different murals that I saw, um, you know, Agua Canyon here, you can see, you know, some of the views that I got to enjoy as well as, you know, the train ride in and out for those who don't know what the Agua Canyon is. Um, it's this beautiful train ride into uh, the deep north of uh, Northern Ontario. It's about four hours north of Sault Ste. Marie. Um, and it inspired the group of seven. Um, so, you know, trying to showcase more of the experience that you're going to be talking about in your articles is awesome. Um, I have seen, you know, you've, I'm sure you have too, the pins that are kind of split up between full, you know, three or four different images. You know, even better, um, the only thing you want to make sure of is that they're clean and crisp because uh, you don't want to overwhelm either, right? Like if, if somebody can't recognize or you can't even recognize what you're trying to showcase, might not be a good idea to use that photo. Uh, okay, I'm gonna get everything. Can I, I, can I, I'm just gonna interrupt for one yeah. second just because we do have a couple questions. Okay. Um, first question is sticking to the same font is important for branding. Um, I think it really depends on what you feel personally 
Um, again, I stick with similar fonts for ease of creation. Um, I think as long as your image is clear, or like your image as a whole, not just the photos, like your Pinterest image, um, is clear and concise and you can read it, that's the biggest thing. Like it's nice to have the swirly, pretty kind of fonts or that kind of grungy look if you're talking maybe about like hiking trails or something like super adventurous, that kind of thing. Um, it is good in my opinion, I think, to try to keep it, maybe not uniform, but similar. Um, just because, yeah, then as you start to become seen more on Pinterest and that, you know, your, you know, people who might not be your followers right now might start to recognize your pins. Um, so that's one of the reasons as well that I use templates because mm -hmm. it makes that a lot easier. And so all of these you're doing in Photoshop, is that correct? Yes. Um, but uh, so one little tip for, uh moving say between photoshop or to canva like these um i'm still on my screen right yeah okay so this for example like the the um the little image here behind my text what you could do is you could create something in photoshop import it into canva and then just overlay it like above the you know your kind of um what do they call it? is it the template where you can block in and see how many photos you want to put in and then you could just drop the photos as yeah. you wish yeah um so that's one thing i think a lot of people don't really realize is that you can actually incorporate um like images or graphic elements with transparency into canva and canva has some that are available i believe as well um and you know like play with the transparency a little bit like you know the the use of a gradient so kind of going from a solid color and fading quickly out into transparency can really add a little bit of like dynamic, like a bit of a dynamic to your pins that just make them pop that little bit more. It's also great for, you know, say you have photos that are um, where your font or your text is kind of harder to read, just popping in a little, you know, partially transparent little graphic behind it can really make it that little bit more legible. Um, because I've seen pins where you know, they'll have this beautiful image, but then the text, you can barely read it because it's blending in. So just making sure that you have a high contrast between, you know, the image itself and the text is really important because, you know, you could be looking at a gorgeous photo of Niagara Falls, for example, but, okay, maybe, maybe Niagara Falls isn't a good example because pretty much everybody knows Niagara Falls. But say you have this beautiful mountain range, it's a mountain range, it could be anywhere in the world. So you need to be able to make sure that your text is legible and, and fairly bold so that people know exactly where they're looking and like what they're thinking of clicking on. Mm -hmm. um, we just had a quick question here. Uh, do we keep all of our old pins and just implement new strategy or should we clean out our old stuff and go new from there? Great question. Um, as I showed, I still have all my really ugly pins. <laughs> um, so deleting them actually has no benefit. Um, Pinterest doesn't care about old pins. And especially, I know, Catherine, you and I were talking before about this, that the old pins might suddenly come alive again. You never know. But if you delete your old pins, what happens is you lose all of those repins, which means that anybody who's pinned it to a board previously, it's gone. It's right. gone forever. Um, so it's traffic that you could be missing out on that you never know when it'll become revived again. Um, so while it's annoying, I get it because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist and I hate if you scroll down, it's like, oh, pretty, pretty, pretty. And then you see the really, really well, ugly stuff later on. <laughs> that, was like, that was like those ugly pins of mine, especially that one from like three years ago. But that's still getting me killer traffic, but it's ugly as sin. Like, yeah. And like, <laughs> it's, and it's really funny too, because like, you don't know either what people are going to be pinning. Like we have these pins set up, but unless you're a little bit more Pinterest minded, I have so many people that have just pinned a photo. From my blog post. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, yeah. Let me see if I can. I think I can actually go in. And I think you can actually search, reverse search. Yeah, here we go. So, like, if you go in and put in even just your blog URL, it's not going to always come up things, but like, here you go. First thing that comes up is one of my really old pins here. Um, and for some reason, everything's about the Philippines, which is strange because I have like three articles about the Philippines. Um, I can't think of it off the top of my head. I will share it um, after this when I'm not on the docket. Um, but there is a way that you can actually reverse search your website and see what people are pinning. Um, so that can give you some insight as well into what photos to use 
for designing your pins because if people are pinning specific photos that are really jumping out compared to other ones on your blog, there's a reason for it. So use that to your advantage and incorporate it into your pin design. Good to know. How many pins are you creating per post? Like how many are you designing when you... Uh, so right now I have, like I said, I have my three templates. Um, so in my older posts, I almost, some of them I only have one pin. Um, some I have two. All of my newer ones, I have my standard three now. Um, but at the same time, I don't always automatically go in and pin them all at once. Right. So what I do is I use those three to kind of spread it out because Pinterest likes seeing fresh pins. And to them, a fresh pin is an image they haven't seen before. Um, so if you have multiple designs, don't throw them all up at once. Don't pin them to all your relevant boards all at once. Slowly roll them out because it's going to give you more traffic in the long run. Because Pinterest is going to think that you're continuously adding fresh pins, even though you might have designed them all at once. Um, and another thing too is, you know, a couple of years ago or, and whatnot. Mind you, again, Pinterest changes all the time. So this is what I'm going by, by what I'm doing. And it seems that it's working for me. So I hope it'll work for you. Um, but, <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna, I took it, let's stop the share for now. Okay. He's in my face again, yay! yay. Um, <laughs> so I'm, like, you know, I'm just talking to a screen, you're like, okay, I'm tired of looking at this shit. Um, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so Pinterest has an, uh, a preference for fresh pins. And so back in the day, they used to say, pin your pin to every relevant board under the sun. Um, nowadays, Pinterest doesn't like that. They, they're starting to see that as kind of spammy. Um, so I read an article that actually said not to pin your pin to more than 10 boards. I have never done this really in my life. Right. Um, I normally pin to two, maximum three relevant boards that are my own. Um, and then, and I, and I stretch those out. Mm -hmm. So say I'll pin from my blog onto my Canada board if it's related to Canada. And then say if it's Ontario, I'll wait a day or two and then pin it from there onto my Ontario board. And then a couple of days later, I'll pin it to my best of board. And having a best of board is really great because, you know, while most Pinterest users are scrolling through their feed and just adding or searching based on what they're looking for, mm -hmm. if they go to your page, you know, they might want to know what else you are sharing. And so if you don't have a, a best of board or a, you know, a feature board that only has your posts in it, you're going to lose people. Um, so it's great to have that, you know, that feature board that showcases only your stuff. Because if, you know, somebody's like, hey, you know what, I like what this person's saying. They, you know, they're really an authority on this. I'm going to go take a look and see what else they're saying because they might have better recommendations, you know, otherwise. Yeah. They have somewhere to go. And I always have that as my, um, my first on the list. And then also if you have the, like the cover photo, it's not really a photo, I like, but it yeah. populates your pins from a board. I always have that as my best of board. Um, yeah. Again, because it's more options that people could click on. And why would I want to have it to a board where there's multiple pins from other people? No, like, be selfish. This is a good thing. <laughs> all you, it's all you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so with your templates that you have in Photoshop, did you buy those templates or did you create those templates? I created those templates because I am OCD like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I am one of those people that I don't have a Pinterest VA or anything like that because I like to control it. Um, mind you, at the same time, I know many VAs that are absolutely fantastic. I'm just too OCD. I'm like, no, I want to know like what's sharing, when I'm sharing it, uh, and that sort of thing. Maybe one day I'll let go a little bit, but not right now. <laughs> not happen. Today is not that day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you have a board for your blog and a best of board? So when you say that you have like a best of, so is that your best of from your blog posts? Is that what you're getting at? No, sorry. That's like my, my best of, sorry, is like my, I just call it's little mine's literally called best of, I've been big, but it's all my blog posts. Okay. Um, but what you can do is if there are certain ones that you really want to highlight, you can either make another board or what you can do is um, within your boards, there are ways to group them. So you can have like kind of like sub boards within a board. So say if there's, uh, if you write about, about, uh, write, write, write about, about, wow, write a lot about, <laughs> you know, specific destinations, you could even divide them again. So that if somebody comes into your blog board and then you say, okay, if you're looking for, you know, Europe, all of your Europe pin, pins are right on the top or Canada, Canada's right there. And then people can continue scrolling and then everything will just be populating. Um, 
I, again, haven't done that personally because I focus more on just the pin creation and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but it is, it is an option. Um, it's really, I think that really depends on personal preference. I haven't really seen much about whether that is super helpful or not. Although I have seen Pinterest prompting me lately to try to organize my blog yeah. board. So me that, you know, Pinterest likes to give little cues like that. So, yeah. you know, it doesn't hurt to try to follow it. And if anything, you know, just try it. Worst comes to worst, you just dissolve that and all those pins go back into your best of board. It's not like you lose them. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and it's the same with, uh, you know, for a while they were kind of focusing on video pins and that too, and giving preference to that. I haven't jumped into video pins because I don't work a lot in video. Um, yeah. But I had heard that Pinterest was giving a lot of, you know, juice to them. So like their impressions and that were great, but the click through rate wasn't as good. That's what I've heard, which kind of makes sense because you're giving, especially if it's more of like a slideshow of information, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's not going to entice people to click into your blog post. So you, you know, kind of think of Pinterest as like a little teaser. So it's like, oh, look at all these pretty pictures. If you want to go here, you have to click. Yes. Now, would you recommend creating like a specific graphic for each board, like for your, for your board? So it's something I started doing and then I personally haven't kept up with it. I have to admit, it's kind of where I, where I fell yeah. flat on it. It's like I started doing for like, you know, 2020 Antarctica travel inspiration. I did like a nice board graphic, you know, 2020 Australia travel inspiration did a nice graphic for it. And all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, and I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. Um, and Aaron just asked me the covers, which is, I'm assuming. Yeah, that's, that, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so yes, I have um, covers designed for every single one. Mind you, I don't create a lot of new boards. Um, so mainly I have it segregated into either continent or country um, because, you know, like personally for me, a lot of my stuff is Canada or Ontario. Um, if you are a globe trotter and it's all over the world, um, it is good to have you know, those kind of little bit more specific boards because um, every time you pin your article to that, it signals to Pinterest what it's about. So that's also why you don't want to pin it to non-relevant boards. Like if you have a, an article about Europe and then you pin it to Canada, like Pinterest is like, huh? And yeah. it gets for it, right? Like, and that's also why if you have, like, I personally have two Pinterest accounts. I have my blog Pinterest account and I have my personal one oh, because awesome. I am a recipe junkie and I like to, I don't make much on, I cook a bit, not more so, <laughs> but I don't have that on my blog board at all because it doesn't relate to travel unless it's like, uh, you know, foods of the world or something like this or recipes from Italy you can make from home. That's kind of where you draw the line. But if it's a general, like, vegan broccoli recipe I don't pin that at all to my travel board because it signals to Pinterest you know it, it kind of confuses it because Pinterest wants you to be more specific Correct. um where's my little where's my point about this I wrote a note about this I yes it. like I know you have notes let's hear what you have <laughs> all right we'll probably get booted uh, off in like 10 or so minutes so we okay have we can we can either Recontinue, or I can also I can also just share my notes entirely. I'll just post them to the group because I'm probably not going to touch on everything anyway, and I like to ramble. Um, there are some f bombs in here. <laughs> <laughs> you actually wrote you. I, I know I know how you write. You write as you speak or as you think. So. <laughs> okay, maybe not f bomb, but there's definitely the odd WTF in here. Um, anyway. Um, oh, I can't, yeah, I can't even find it in here. Uh, but anyway, so, but yes, Pinterest likes it when you are on topic. So um, travel itself is, I think, a solid enough niche that, you know, any, everything that I pin from my blog account is solely travel related. Mm -hmm. um, and then whenever I'm not pinning, okay, so before I dive into that, um, repin threads are your friend. You just have to be careful with them. If you're just starting out uh, with a new account, don't go and pin 100 pins in a day all at once because spam, or Pinterest of spam filter is going to kick in and shut you down and then you're dead in the water. Yeah. Um, what I normally do if I'm doing a repin thread is I pin about 10 to 20 and then I wait a little bit and then 10 to 20 again later on. And even with pin, uh, Pinterest kind of instilling that don't pin more than 50 pins, I on average pin 
probably about 70 to 80 pins a day. Um, that does not have to be you. That is just me. Um, and, Cause I know I have friends who only pin 30 a day and they get good traction as well. Yeah. Um, I'm down to about 20 pins a day right now. Yeah. The algorithm. And, yeah. And the biggest thing is that Pinterest wants you to be consistent. So if you're pinning, you know, 10 to 20 every single day, that's going to do a lot better than say 50 on a Monday, 50 on a Friday. Um, and this is where Tailwind I have found is really helpful because, um, so Pinterest's day is based on the UTC. So right now for us, it actually resets its day at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, so what I have scheduled in my Tailwind is I have five pins of my own go out shortly after eight o'clock. So like 8.01, 8.04, 8.07, bam. So they're right out there. Because if you go into your account and you see there's like a following, following tab that you can click on, Pinterest will pull those five pins and they will show them if people are, when people are following you, those are the pins that they're going to show them being like, oh, this is what so-and-so is pinned today. So the sooner you can do that, the sooner you get on there and that can really help with your impressions and, and getting your pins yeah. out there. The, the, the question was, how long does it take you to pin 20 a day? Um, I actually, I utilize Tailwind myself and I have a grid set up where I think I have it now set to 25 pins per day and I make sure I mix my pins with pins from other boards or other tribe mates um because i have um well with my with my tailwind subscription i'm a part of five tribes mm -hmm. so i make sure i'm always posting from the tribes every single day um so i schedule it and it's something that takes me five minutes to do every single day um when i design pins like Lindsay said you do three pins i try to do six to seven right now per post but like i don't put them all in at once I might put like two or three new ones out per day. And this is all something I just, you know, I'll sit down in the morning and do. And um, yeah, and then I'll put them on in Tailwind to post like once a week to the different relevant boards. So yeah, five, 10 minutes a day, I think is probably the best way to describe my Tailwind action. <laughs> yeah, and like, honestly, like it sounds like a lot too, but usually whenever I go and pin my little cluster from a repin thread or anything like that, I'm doing it when I'm, you know, kind of in between tasks or I'm like, you know, having a little, you know, a little brain fart or I'm just like trying to think about something else. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, well, you know what, I'll just go and quickly do a couple pins, blah, blah, blah. And then carry on. Yeah. Like I don't, it's not one of those things where I'm slaving over it all the time. Um, it's honestly, and then as long as it's easy for you, like if it becomes stressful, pull it back, roll it back. Um, because you know, when Pinterest isn't fun anymore, then you're not going to want to do it and it's just going to stress you out and we have enough stressful shit in our lives right now we don't need that garbage uh, <laughs> that's right <laughs> okay um what else? Any other, is there any other questions i see the chat going off but i'm afraid i'm gonna go tumbling down the rabbit hole so I'm gonna that's okay i've been i've been relaying those questions from okay, the chat for perfect. you so stay focused you can stay focused. <laughs> Thanks, Fran. Can we share the Facebook groups that we participate in? Uh, we can. Yeah, I haven't actually yeah. participated in any Facebook groups in a, in a long time. <laughs> so, um, again, this is definitely based on your niche. Um, both of us are in the, the travel sphere, so I'm, I'm assuming most of your groups are travel related. I know all of mine are travel related. And again, that comes yeah. down to pinning relevant pins. You don't want to go into a very generic Pinterest thread where you're pinning recipes, yoga, and everything else if you're, so, like, if you're based on a travel account. If you're into the, the yoga and wellness, find repin threads that are based on wellness and yoga. Yeah. Especially too, you have to think, you know, what your target audience is. You know, yeah. are, for us, we're looking for travelers. You know, for yogis, they're looking for people who are working on their wellness and yeah. focusing on yoga. So if they pop in a travel, you know, a random travel to go hiking in Canada, their viewers could be like, what? This makes no sense. So kind of think like that. Like if you ever are unsure what you should do, try to put yourself in the mind of the user and be like, as a user, what would I think about this? Um, and I find that that kind of helps clarify. And if not, ask in the TBC group where I have plenty <laughs> of brilliant minds that they can say what they think. And, you know, like Catherine and I were talking yesterday and I had a totally different point that she hadn't thought of. Like, you know, <laughs> different minds 
help expand and get you out of that tunnel vision that we're all guilty of. I know I am guilty of it way too much. Yeah, so. absolutely. <laughs> Next question is, do we leave them in drafts till we're ready to pin? Um, I, um, I leave them in, I actually have a folder on the desktop of my computer and I probably have about a good hundred or so pins in there that are ready to go. Um, if I find myself one day not having any inspiration, not wanting to sit down in front of Canva and make a new pin, I have a bank of pins myself that I could just go for. So yeah. And like for me, um, I have, like I said, I have my three and especially now any new blog post, I go in and I put those three in the bottom of my, of my article, but it doesn't mean that I pin them right from my article right away. Yeah. So then maybe like a week or so I'll be like, okay, I want to give this, you know, this post some love again. I'll go and repin it from my, um, from my post. And then it's, you know, again, a fresh pin yes. idea. Yes, um, exactly. I lost what I was going to say. I know that. We have, we have nine minutes left in, uh, on our broadcast, so. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 got, I got the ding showed up. Yeah, I was gonna say, I see the, the remain, <laughs> remaining meeting time. It's like, oh no, like. <laughs> like so let, let's, let's hit your notes. <laughs> yes, oh yeah, 100%. I will share all of these. I, I apologize in advance for any not so family friendly verbiage I may use. I may slander Instagram the odd time too. Uh, <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> Um, okay, let's see. Oh, um, in case anybody was wondering, um, pinning directly from a blog post versus uploading it directly to Pinterest seems to have no difference. Oh, good um, point. I, really, I think it's just based on your own workflow. Um, personally, for me, I have found though that pinning using the like the the pin plugin, it doesn't like to pull your description. So that's something to think of. Um, what I often do is I'll actually go and try and use the schedule button from Tailwind because uh, it pulls my description and then I'll even just go in and hit pin right away or I'll schedule it for later on. Um, so that's something to think of. Mm -hmm. If you notice that you've pinned a pin from Pinterest and it, a pin from Pinterest, yeah. um, <laughs> and there's no, there's no description, go in and edit it as soon as you can. Um, also, one thing that's a little snarky about Pinterest I've noticed is that sometimes it won't let you copy and paste the exact same description. It actually, I don't know if it's just me or if it's a Pinterest thing, but when I hit save, it doesn't save it. It's just like, nope. I've seen that too. I've seen that happen yeah. a few times. So um, what I do is I just rearrange my sentences or I'll just add an extra word or two and then it'll save just fine. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Would you say that Tailwind is a necessity? Like for me, I say it's a necessity. Would you say it's a necessity? Um, I don't think it's a necessity per se, but it has definitely upped my game because I find not only is it helpful um, for that, um, oh my God, I just lost the word, but, but for being consistent, there we go. Yeah. Um, but I tend to lose track of time and I'm one of those people that like actually, you know, a blogger probably shouldn't say this, but writing is actually very difficult for me. That's the hardest part of blogging for me is writing. Um, so if I get a surge to write, then I just go, 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 and I don't look at anything else. Um, so in that case, then sometimes I'll miss that 8 p.m. deadline or I'll even forget about pinning for a day. But then that's when Tailwind is really helpful because you could schedule it in advance so you don't have to worry. So it's one of those things where you can go in and be like, okay, I'm going to get the week ahead of me all set. Bam, 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 bam. And then it, like a crock pot you set it and forget it yeah um again just going to the 8 p.m time just because this is how my brain works and things like to just pop into my head mm -hmm. um i've heard that those five pins right after 8 p.m are not as important as they used to be it's more of your pinning consistently throughout the day right. um i haven't tested it personally to see if there's a big difference uh, i still do my five and then i have a smart loop which I have focused around by Canada pins because that's my main focus on my blog. And then I have it set to go out once a day. And so that there's always another one of mine going out in the mash of other pins that of people that I'm pitting. Gotcha. Um, my, I don't know a hundred percent if, if smart loop. Yeah. I saw that typo. Chris. Um, <laughs> if smart loop is worth it. Um, it just came with my deal that I bought in. I got in on the Black Friday deal. And so my, this is actually my, my year of testing for Tailwind. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, gotcha. 
Yeah, I've never used Tailwind before the beginning of December. So Tailwind is still fairly brand new to me. Ooh, okay. Um, but I have found it, yeah. yeah, I found it super helpful just because I, I tend to be a little scatterbrained. So it's very, yeah. it really helps me stay organized, which is yeah. one thing I really love about it. Um, but I have also noticed that despite everything going on, my impressions haven't gone down a lot. Like I was hovering just under 400K a month and I'm at about 340 which is right. not a big drop. Oh, that's not a big drop. During everything that's going on. My traffic has indeed dropped, but it, Pinterest is still a high driver of it. Um, and again, I think that comes down to being a visual search engine because people want to, you know, peruse and just look at pretty photos. And so that might be why there's not as much of a conversion right now because people aren't actually planning trips. Yeah. Um, or whatnot, but I guarantee that people in yoga and wellness or, you know, food recipe based yeah. blogs, they're probably skyrocketing right now. And again, to try to get yourself seen, it's good to have high quality photos. You want to have um, high contrast. So bright colors, and anything that's eye catching, that's going to make you stand out from the rest is very helpful. And even again, think about yourself, like, if you're going through, are you going to pin, you know, a super close up of a food that looks like kind of, uh, or are you going to pin something that's really nicely set up with like a pretty placemat or bowl or whatever, probably something like that. So think also in the entire image creation, not just your specific topic that you're trying to feature on your pin. So we have about three minutes left and a great question from Raymond just popped up. So now that Pinterest wants fresh images, how does this affect SmartLoop? Because it's just pinning the same image. This is very true. Um, so again, Tailwind is going to know the most out of anybody minus Pinterest of, and you know, they're going to play it close to the chest. Um, mm -hmm. I go by what Tailwind says. So I actually rejig my smart loop because I had two running before because I used to have a winter travel one going. Obviously it's not winter anymore. So I scrapped that and put a few more pins into my Canada repin. Mm -hmm. um, and it actually, when it recalculated, it had said that my previous suggest, like my previous setting was too high and that it could, it could trigger a spam filter if I continued going with it. Mm -hmm. So I think just go by what Tailwind recommends. Um, because again, you're a paying customer, so they're not going to dick you around, you know, cause then you're not going to be very happy if you follow Tailwind's advice and then you get spam blocked. Um, so that's what I would do. Um, again, with repinning and things like that. Um, I think it just helps to bring it again to top of mind. Um, and I, I think it might be more so, maybe not so much in the actual, um, oh, like it, no, oh, what are my words here? Words yeah. um, it'll, it's not so much maybe with the search feature on Pinterest, but if those people that are just scrolling through to see what people are pinning at this moment, that's yeah. when Smart loop will come in handy, I think. Gotcha. All okay. right, so we have less than a minute. So yes. I'm a <laughs> So we're gonna thank everyone for joining in. We will have to do a part two at some point. So yes. keep those questions coming. Uh, I'm gonna post this in the group later on today. I'm gonna stop the record here now. Um, yes, I'm gonna get this posted for everyone and thank you guys so much for joining and thank you, Lindsay. If you have any oh. questions, message me, comment, <laughs> <or> chat. <laughs>